Hey guys, what's happening? I got this off eBay. This is a test tape. Side B has a 3 kilohertz signal for speed adjustment. And side A has an 8 kilohertz signal for a zenith and head alignment. Now, I don't know much about head alignment and a zenith on cassette decks. I had never really thought they needed it. I thought that was more of an 8-track thing. But if I ever need it, I have it. This test tape right here is 100% accurate for an inch and a 7 8 per second tape speed. So I want to... I suspect this to be a little bit off, not much, because um, this had uh, brand new belts installed by the tech I got it off of, and the speed has altered slightly since. Not much, but slightly. So I want to test it and see if I can get it right. Again, like I said, I know he did this already, but I guess the new belts must have been too tight and they stretched out. So it's playing a little bit off. Like I said, not much. The only way it's really noticeable is if you record it on this deck and play it back on another. That's when you really hear it. So, I've got a meter here. We're going to test frequency and uh, we'll go from there. See if we can get this speed adjusted accordingly. So, I'm going to plug, uh, put the tape cassette in. is you test it off of the line output jack. So we're gonna unplug this, hook the positive lead of the meter into the center and touch the negative off of uh, the ground here. Or actually I can probably just, yeah, yeah, let's put it right here into the ground. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And uh, you'll look and, and look and try to get, to get your meter to read as close to 3000 Hertz as possible. And uh, yeah, it should be that simple. But anyway, we're gonna find out. Let me get the lid off of this and we'll go from there. Catch you in a few. All right, let's test this out. Hopefully it's not too annoying. I don't know why that's reading a frequency right now, but it is. Let me, uh, obviously it'd be on the voltage AC, Hertz. Yeah, it's reading. Give me a reading for some reason. All right, anyway, let's see here, play. That's not annoying or anything. Uh, coming into the... That is close. <laughs> that is really close. So I did that by ear, just by... Wow, that is crazy. That was just by using... I don't know why it's hot, but I gotta get a good grip on it. I feel like if you don't have it in there good enough, it'll... Wow, that's... I'm going to show it anyway how to adjust it just so just for the sake of the video purposes but that is freaking good I did that by ear by just playing a Billy Joel song through it and then I lined it up with the uh with the digital file on this on the disc and played it at the same time and got to the same spot and saw how far it was off by the end This one here, the speed adjustment is right here. You really shouldn't use a metal screwdriver, but that's what I have. Let me turn you some volume here. Okay, so that's slower than it should be. Going faster. We're at right at 3,000. So 3.0 KHZ will be 3,000 hertz. That 
That's annoying. Crap. That's why you gotta be careful doing that. If that lands on the wrong thing, you could really mess something up. I should get myself a plastic flathead for stuff like this, but I really don't do it often enough for it to be a problem. I kind of feel like I shouldn't have messed with it. I'd say that's pretty much money right there. I don't think it's gonna get any better than that. It's about right where I had it. That's perfect. All right. So we're going to, uh, the sound's not fluctuating. It's pretty even. All right, so I'll flip the other side over quick and just for shits and giggles, we'll see if it reads eight. Took that out. It's probably all the way in the beginning of the tape. I'm not even going to bother messing with it. Maybe I should click. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, whoever thought of that is a complete genius. <laughs> Either that or I'm completely dumb for not thinking of it, one or the other. I'll let you guys decide on that. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch this. Hang on. I'll put it back on when I get to the 8. Alright, so I got to the 8,000 hertz signal. Or 8KHZ signal. Kilohertz. That sounds even more annoying, I think. Anyway. Let's get to the point here. And I should get a 8.000 KHZ signal. I guess I gotta get, to, get up to hitting there, right? Yeah, hang on, I'm trying, having a hard time getting it to... Oh, there you go. That's pretty damn close, honestly. That's why I tell you that's for a Zenith, because this one's a little, not quite as stable. I don't know if that's something to do with the, like, I'm sure there's a, some science or a theory, electrical theory behind it, but I'm not really sure why it would be fluctuating a little bit more. But again, that's really not much, much difference at all. That's still reading. I need to make a, a proper cable for this. It would make my life a lot easier. Ah. Right at the end of the uh, test tape. 
I don't know why they didn't just record the whole freaking side. They didn't though. If this is slightly closer to three, I'll be happy. But I'm impressed about myself that I was able to do that by ear like that. That's freaking crazy. What can I say? I'm just that freaking good, I guess. <laughs> This is where the fact that I have OCD really shows. That is really pissing me off that that keeps... That's about perfect right there. I'm gonna call that good. That's about where it was before I messed with it. I'm actually really regretting messing with this. I should have messed with the one I have downstairs that I know is a little bit off right now. Anyway, guys, that's uh, enough of this. We'll put the cover back on. We'll test it with some music. Uh, this is definitely by far the best looking A-Track or A-Track cassette player ever made. There ain't no question. In my end, there's nothing can even compare to the Marantz 5220. <laughs> like I said, the main thing is it's completely recapped inside and rebuilt. Belts were changed, but I guess they must have stretched by me using it. When I got it, the speed was dead on accurate, but as I started using it, it got a little bit faster. So, that being said, I had to do what I had to do to get it right again. I only had to do it by ear once, and ever since then it's been fine, so hopefully that's the end of that. Now that Pioneer CTF 700 I have down the basement, it plays fine, and then it plays real slow, and then it plays fine, and it plays real slow. I don't know what the hell to think about that. That was a recap unit, too. I don't know what the hell's up with these tape decks, man. That one, I don't think's a belt issue. I don't even know what the hell to think about that one. I'll dig into it one of these days. Right now, it seems to be working fine, but every now and again, the keys will, the, uh, the push button keys will stick, and then it'll give me all kinds of speed issues. I put that back. No, I didn't put it back in. 
Yeah, I got OCD, so I have all my freaking cords labeled. Tape one, play. Yeah, I'm bad with that. said the meter should be dead on too. Yep. That's perfect pretty much. Looks like the left might or the right side might be just a hair down, but I'm not messing with it. I'm gonna leave it alone. Put it back on the tripod, get that taper wound. And we'll try what songs that everybody should know. If you're watching this channel, chances are you know every song I'm about to demo on here. And that'll give you an idea how correct the tape speed is. Speaking of that, another pet peeve of mine is people that sell restored or refurbished or perfectly working cassette decks and a track deck, a track decks especially, is that they'll play it back on a tape that they recorded on that machine. Now the problem with that is, if a tape deck's playing at the wrong speed, and you record it and play it back on that deck, that song is gonna appear to be playing right because it, you're playing a tape back on the machine it was recorded on. So obviously, the recorded speed on that cassette is wrong too. So when you play the wrong speed cassette on a wrong speed deck that it was recorded on, it's gonna appear that the speed is perfect when in fact it's wrong. And a lot of times I notice they'll put an A track or a cassette in and they'll play a song that most people wouldn't know or they'll play like a B side. Luckily for me, I can I can tell you just about any Zeppelin song, uh, Boston, stuff like that. <laughs> I'll know right away if it's off or not. Chances are. I'm not gonna sit there and say that I know everything because nothing could be further from the truth. But we're gonna start my man Billy Joel here. Everybody knows Allentown, right? Yeah thought so. Excellent album, by the way. Not a bad song on here. Tell me that machine ain't gorgeous. dark everybody knows a little song called a uh, touch of gray
That sounds perfect to me. What do you think? That was 30 bucks well spent for that test tape. Everybody's gonna know this one too. I wish they wouldn't have put the edited album cover on there. Censorship is freaking ridiculous. But yeah, everybody knows that song. Like I said, properly maintained tape, good felt pad. I gotta say, that sounds amazing for a pre-recorded tape. But for factory tapes, that is incredible. That's dead on accurate. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and of course, another one. Everybody knows. And one of my favorite album covers ever, too. I actually want to get the tapestry for that to put down in the basement. One of these days I'll find one. I have that already set to it. And one of my favorite songs of all time, by far.
That one does have a little bit of wow and floater sounds like, but this tape has extremely high mileage. Other than like the really high frequency uh, guitar, I mean, it sounded accurate to me, but like I said, this tape has, I'm pretty sure this tape has high mileage. This, These three here had no noticeable wow and floater at all. This one here did a little bit, so I'm gonna go on a limb and say, it's, say with this one, it's most likely the gonna be the tape. But yeah. Let me know what you think. I'm actually pretty happy with the way they turned out. And uh, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with how good I got that just by ear. So, yeah, anyway. That being said, I think that's going to uh, sum up the uh, video. I got some stuff I got to do outside here today. More snow. So, I think as, for, as far as audio goes, I think that's as far as I'm going to get. As usual, guys, thank you for watching, and please let me know what you think. And uh, I'll catch you again on the next one. I don't know why I'm seeing all black right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I don't know what was up with that. Anyway, looking forward to seeing the uh, comments on that. And uh, if any of you guys have experience with these uh, test tapes, let me know. Is there anything I could have done better? Anything that, did I do everything right in your opinion? Kind of curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. Like I said, this is my first time ever doing a speed calibration technically, other than, you know, like a technical one, other than, um, you know, hitting a play button on the CD player or a phone or an iPod and playing the tape back and seeing how close it is at the end of the song. So anyway, guys, peace out and thank you for watching. Hey, update one more thing before I close it out for you guys. I just for shits and giggles I played Allentown in its entirety and I lined it up on my phone where the timing was exact right on the first verse and It started and ended the same time and it was in perfect synchronicity throughout the whole length of the, of the entire song so <laughs> She's perfect If you made it this far, thank you very much for your support and thank you for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll uh, catch you on the next one.